I'm Alex Michelson. This week on The Issue Is, Anthony Rendon is with us in his final days as the Speaker of the California Assembly. Plus... Let's work together, Mitch. I think we can do that. Bipartisanship. Comedian and impressionist Matt Friend. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. Other than governor, the Speaker of California's Assembly is the most powerful position in the most populous state in the country. Past speakers include some big-name politicians like Willie Brown, Antonio Villaraigosa, and Karen Bass. And back in 2016, Anthony Rendon officially took over. Congratulations. Thank you. The Democrat from Lakewood has led the chamber longer than anyone other than Willie Brown. In July, he'll officially hand over his gavel to Robert Rivas. Speaker Anthony Rendon, welcome back to The Issue Is. It's great to be back. Thank you. How are you feeling right now? Uh, tired. <laughs> We've had a, a couple of uh, very busy months. We had our, our, our appropriations deadline, House of Origins deadline. Uh, finalized the budget last Thursday, working on some trailer bills right now, so we're, we're working hard till the end. Is it fair to say if it was up to you solely, you would serve as speaker until the end of your time in Sacramento? No, that was never, that was never the goal. Um, in, in my final term and uh, turning over a uh, plan uh, in, my final, in my final term. But, you know, it, it did get a little messy there, uh, the fight between you and Robert Rivas in terms of who would be in control of this. He made a move to get control a few different times. What is the nature of your relationship with him, with Robert Rivas right now? We have a, we have a working relationship. He was in my office last week. Our, our staffs have been working on the transition. So, you know, we, we definitely have a working relationship for sure. Well, the reason you initially got into politics in the first place was because you were an early childhood educator and you felt like more money needed to go to that, that there wasn't enough investment being done in that space. Did you achieve your goal on that front? Absolutely. And when uh, I ran for office 2000, 2011, uh, there were about $1.2 billion in early childhood education cuts. We put that money back. We put, put back all the money that was cut out and then uh, an additional probably 1.5, depending on how you add it up. Um, so we definitely did that. Uh, the, the future's bright in Sacramento for early childhood education, I believe. The other thing that you're most passionate about is the arts. Um, there's the Southeast Los Angeles Cultural Arts Center designed by Frank Gehry, which I think you're more proud of than anything else, right? Literally the single most uh, important thing for me, the single thing I'm most proud of. It's an incredible uh, opportunity to bring. We have so many uh, world-class arts institutions in Southern California because of uh, traffic, because of transportation uh, issues. We know it's hard for people from my district uh, to get to downtown or West LA to have a world-class venue in Southeast Los Angeles built by an architect who not only is world-class himself, but somebody who I wrote uh, about two or three of my dissertation chapters on uh, is just a, a fantastic thing. Meanwhile, you know, the biggest issue in the state continues to be homelessness. Um, since you've gone in there, homeless spending has skyrocketed, but the number of homeless has also gone up. Um, what do you say to critics who say, you guys have gotten it wrong when it comes to homelessness? I think it's fair for people to be critical. I think it's fair for people to be concerned. One thing that Jim Gallagher, or the minority leader, and I agreed on at the outset of this year was, we need to look at accountability, accountability matrices. We need to make sure that the cities and, and, and local governments are spending that money effectively. But people are right to be frustrated and, and concerned about, about homelessness. In your view, has the state of California failed when it comes to homelessness? We, I, I'd say uh, we as a state uh, have tried to do quite a bit, the sort of collective whole, the state uh, and the municipal governments working together. I'd say uh, we have a lot of work to do for sure. But yeah, the, the problem seems to be increasing. What's next for you? I'm running for state treasurer in 2026, which is a little ways off. Uh, but right now my focus is, uh, is on my district and uh, continuing to represent those good folks uh, in Southeast LA County and particularly working on that uh, cultural arts center. What would be your advice to future speakers? What's the most important lesson you learned? I think the most important lesson I learned is to listen to people. Um, it's really a, a job where the more data you collect, the more 
uh, information you have, uh, the better job you can do of, of sort of uh, assessing situations and of, of really helping people. I try to let people talk as much as they want, sort of as much as they need to, sort of without interrupting them. Repeat back what you heard, because sometimes we just don't get that right. Sometimes we hear uh, not what they say, but what, uh, you know, what we want to hear. Um, and just keep on listening, keep on listening. It's the most important thing you can do. Well, I think your advice is to keep on listening and repeat back to people what they just said. So I'm trying to, trying to listen to that. So uh, the, the, thing, the thing about well done. You, the thing about you um, is you love to read. Uh, you uh, uh, say, I'm doing an hour of, of reading a day, no matter what. It's core of your passion. Uh, so as we wrap things up, I'm wondering, can you give us a book list, an assignment, the old professor, of uh, maybe uh, two or three books that you would most suggest that we read? Oh, God, uh, have to be The Philosophy of Andy Warhol, A to Z. That's like a, a bit of a Bible for me. Uh, something, something from Nietzsche. Um, he's always, he's the, just the best writer, the most dramatic writer uh, I ever read. Um, has to be something Irish, uh, maybe something from Brendan Brehan, uh, one of his plays, maybe. Um, and uh, uh, how do you not, you have to have James Joyce too. You gotta have something from James Joyce. Are you gonna write a book? Uh, <laughs> not about politics. I will write about anything other than politics in the same way that I never read about politics. Never, 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 never. Interesting. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. You've always been kind to us throughout all of this. Uh, we appreciate uh, your friendship and we appreciate you coming on the issue is. Anytime. We've Thanks. Got, we've got one more trick, uh, one more thing for you, though. Up next, we've got comedian and impressionist oh. Matt Friend. But we go to break with one of your favorite bands, Lord Huron, who you talked about before. So we oh, go wow. to break with their oh, wow. song, How Meet, cool. Meet Me in the Woods. If I were gonna cast a guy to play a governor in a movie, Gavin Newsom, he's a sexy guy. In March of 2021, we first introduced you to impressionist Matt Friend. I met him on an app called Clubhouse, where he played a fake Howard Stern. Well, recently, the real Howard Stern invited him on. I just want to know right? Right or wrong, right? Right. <laughs> right. 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 Howard, left or right? Right. Uh, right. 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 <laughs> Matt has sort of become a regular on the Howard Stern Show, which is kind of wild. Matt, friend, welcome back to The Issue Is. You have blown up, buddy. Uh, thank you for having me, and it is a thrill to be back on my favorite California show. Uh, I'm so excited to be we, here. We appreciate that. We're very <laughs> proud of you and, and take credit for all of your success. Uh, you were one of the first to believe in me, so you should take all the credit you want. All right. Well, we, lo we love hearing that. Uh, let, let's start. I, I want to tell people about what you've been up to since you were last here, which is kind of it's, crazy, yeah. including Howard Stern, because we met right. with you doing fake Howard Stern, and Howard, who is known for not particularly liking impressions of him has treated you like a son almost. It's it's unbelievable the momentum of this past year. I, I guess how it has kind of treated me like a son. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's wild to me. But the momentum has been crazy. Kind of crazy things happening every day in my career. It seems like. Well, and let, let's talk about all those things individually. Yeah, please. Let, let's start though with you know, one of your all-time favorite shows is Family Guy. Oh Seth MacFarlane is like totally your, your, insane. Your, your, totally your, insane. Your it's crazy. Model. And you came yeah. in and you're doing voices on Family Guy I know. now. Yeah. It's totally insane. Uh, that's Roger the Alien, in case you didn't know. I'm sure the Fox 11 viewers know who Roger the Alien it, is. It, yes. airs, it airs on Fox that's 11. That's true, yes. Yes. Um, but uh, no, that is like the show of my childhood. You can yeah. ask any of my childhood friends, my parents. I could not shut up doing Stewie Griffin as a kid. I still can't. And now I have a little bit more of an excuse because I've done some miscellaneous voices for them and The Simpsons. So surreal dream come true and, and and you've grown your your social media yeah. audience in a big way yes uh, including your snapchat following so much so that they invited you to this event called new fronts where yes. snapchat basically rolls out their technology to all their advertisers yes. we've got some video of you there you know we know that you do this impression of tim cook doing these <laughs> good events. morning yeah and you kind of look like it, tim cook here it's leading this whole thing it's so surreal i mean snapchat is the best because i'm able to show my audience a whole different side of me where it's more of my day-to-day -day life, the behind the scenes as opposed to a more polished final product that you see on other social platforms. So I was thrilled 
to be there with the Snapchat team. Shout out Jim. We love Jim. Okay, so, we love yeah. Jim, whoever Jim is. <laughs> um, uh, meanwhile, you mentioned the Golden Globes, yes. right? Uh, so they invited you to do social media on the red carpet, the official yes. Golden in, Globes. In, in, and and uh, one of the big nominees, the big winners that night oh, was Austin, Austin Butler, Butler yes. for, for Elvis, who recognized you. Yeah. Let's show that moment. Oh, my God. That's very you good. Crush that thing. Thank you. Can we do a little If I Can Dream for the camera? If I'd like I to hear you. Dream of a better land where all my brother Baz. Congratulate Baz. <laughs> <laughs> so Baz is Baz Lerman, who of course is the director of that. Yes. I mean, are these guys now recognizing you? What's it like being out there on the red carpet? I mean, I'd imagine you have a similar feeling because I know so many Californians love and respect your work. <laughs> so I was on the carpet and then Austin comes up to me and goes, I just love your video with Jeff Goldblum <laughs> and Rami Malek. It was so great. And I and made the conversation that much easier than we did the little singing and he was the nicest, coolest guy ever. And I'm excited for Dune, because he's going to be in a movie with Timothy Chalamet, my, one of my other favorite impressions. So it seems like everybody who's in a biopic is going to be doing a movie together. Yeah. yeah. And, and meanwhile, <laughs> you know, that's Hollywood. Let's that's talk Hollywood. Washington, Absolutely. where they're even more narcissistic and, like, looking at impressions of themselves, right? Yeah, who likes to look <laughs> so, at themselves more, Hollywood or D.C.? Yeah, well, yeah. it takes one to know one yeah. with us, right? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so anyways, uh, you get invited to the White House Correspondents' Dinner, uh, and we know that You've played Mitch McConnell on our show uh, many times before, <laughs> uh, but we got the glasses, right? Do we want to show we, people we, a little Mitch? Well, absolutely. Is, is Mitch Listen, coming out here? This is the impression I do <laughs> to get women to be sexually attracted to me. Because <laughs> nothing drives women crazier than little of the Kentucky senator, and they love that bourbon scuba to do. Yes, they do. So, so Chuck Schumer, <laughs> yes. who is like Mitch McConnell's nemesis, <laughs> liked this so Harry much. Harry Potter and Voldemort. He invited you to do the impression with him. Let's show that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Chuck, listen, it is really great to be with you right now. I have to just tell you, Kentucky bourbon is better. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's I mean, insane, that, isn't it? That is insane. It's and we, insane. And we know that Adam Schiff also wants to be in the Senate with Chuck Schumer. He was on our show yes. recently. Yes, birthday and we, was yesterday. And, and we showed him your uh, video here, and, and he was so inspired by you, as, as we show this video, uh, <laughs> that he invited you to do comedy with him. Uh, yes. You were a part of, of his comedy at the Democratic National Convention. You're doing a big event for him this weekend. And, and recently, you're playing Trump, and he's playing him, and, and we hear a side of him that we've never heard before on TV. Let's watch this. If you had the chance, what would you say to me? Right to my face. Well, what I would say to you oh, is... Oh, you're such a nasty um, guy. What would you say to what, me? What my colleague Mike Thompson told me, I should say, the first time you attacked me on Twitter, he said, Adam, you should tweet back, Mr. President, when they go low, we go high. Let's go Pencil mix is it best, and thank you very much. That, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, that's what I love were to bring you, out were, of people. Were you surprised? I mean, I like to think, I want to take a little of the credit because I've never seen him like that before. No. So I like to bring that out of people. That was that was a crazy moment. Hilarious. I mean, who would have thought that he'd have the better punchline? That's why he got <laughs> censured, by the way, because of that video. So I take you the credit. You are responsible for that. That yeah. video, I'm yeah. sorry, Adam. That's yeah. my fault. Yeah. Apologies. Uh, so you're, you're headed on a nationwide tour. We want to yeah. put up some of the information on the screen of where people can see you. Yes. Sep yes. September 29th, you'll be in L.A., October 18th. 18th, my birthday, you'll be in San Francisco, mattfriend.com slash standup. You can buy tickets. Um, and we want you to do an impression session for us. We're, so when I'm we come back, we're going to do that. Um, but as we go to break, I want to show what I think is the wildest moment you've had of all. Okay. So you're out on the National Mall <laughs> talking to people about George Santos. And who walks up? Alex, this was the craziest thing that will ever happen in my career. <laughs> Aside from being back on the issue is George Santos, George Santos walks by in the middle of random interviews, creating content on the street. About George Santos. About George Santos. So let's go to break with George Santos and Matt Fred. <laughs> What are you doing, George? Are you videoing there? Stop by. Oh, he's George, you're a nasty guy. George, we love you a lot. We love your outfits. We love your dresses. You're a great guy. Well, Alec, let me tell you, the way you look at me, it makes me sick. And you're a nasty guy. Comedian Matt Friend runs into Alec Baldwin in the streets of New York doing perhaps his most famous character, uh, Donald Trump. Matt is, is back with us. And you've brought many of your famous friends along of with course, you as always. to discuss, you know, the big issue of the next couple years, of course, is, is the presidential <laughs> election. And uh, we're going to start by welcoming Governor Ron DeSantis to yeah, the sure. show. Yeah, sure. Uh, Governor, uh, 
talk to us about 2024 and why you think you're, you're such a strong contender. Yeah, sure. I mean, first of all, it's a disgusting question. Okay, told to look in this camera. He's a woke reporter. We all know this. You know, we got to stop <laughs> pussyfooting around. Okay, enough with the riffraff. You look at the city of San Francisco, once great city. It's horrible what's happening under the governor, these leftist woke policies. And when I'm president, we're going to restore sanity to America. Okay, so it's disgusting what's happening. And we're going to end this madness. Thank you very much. All right, meanwhile, a former President LGBTQ Trump. LGBTQ is wrong. Former President Trump is, is here with us as well. Well, that's true. What's the question, Annie? Um, why are, are this you... Guy this guy is such a dog. He is such a dog. What are you going to ask? <laughs> What are you going to ask? Why are you the best contender? Well, I'll tell you what. A lot of people are saying there's competition. There's 40 points ahead. It's not even a close. It's not even close. And, uh, and are you ready for this? Yeah. It's a disaster how they're treating me. They talk about the documents. There's a lot of things in the boxes. There's golf clothes. There's my spray paint. There's a lot of different things. And it's horrible you even bringing that up. Because Chris Christie, who's a slob, no one wants Brendan Fraser in the whale to be the president, okay? It's nasty <laughs> what he's doing. He should go back home. Nikki Haley is a nasty person, like Elizabeth Warren, lying about her heritage. Yeah. And it's terrible. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, we want to get the other side in here. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom is is joining us now. Do you want to respond to what we just heard from the former president? Yeah, you know, you know I just, I got to keep moving my, my, my hands out like this to the camera. <laughs> I'm going to unbutton my shirt, because you all know I'm the nation's sexiest governor. And, and you know, eat your heart out, Florida. Eat your heart out, southern states. California, they talk about an exodus of people leaving the state under my governorship. No, no. Per capita, it's been way less. And let me tell you, it's just wrong what Ron DeSantos is doing. I'm offended. And Donald Trump is going to clean his clock. Yeah, yes. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go now to uh, Howard Stern right. is, is back with us. Right. The, the man himself, I know, you, you know, early in your career, you weren't that political, but you've been weighing in on politics more these days. Your take on the state of things right, right. now. Let me just tell you something. Right? I mean, these candidates, they make me so sick. Right? You see DeSantis, you see Trump. Donald Trump, he used to be my friend. Now he's disgusting. Right. And Joe Biden, I don't even know what he's talking about. Right. Like every time he's talking, he just kind of moves off the stage. We, we need someone like me to run for the presidency. And that is why I, Howard Stern, the king of all media, I'm announcing I am going to be the king of the United States and run for president. Robin, are you with me? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, now. Wow. Go to righthowardstern.com for more. Thank you. Quite, a, quite an announcement on the right. issue is. I'm glad you chose our show right. to make that announcement. Finally, <laughs> Andy Cohen weighing in on the 2024 race. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing question. So mausley, yes. I honestly think California Governor Gavin Newsom would be the zaddiest prez of all and I just want to know which POTUS candidate is the most well endowed. That's the real question. Yes. Well, we, we are getting the big issues here. Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure the, Newsom has a big is, issue. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Hopefully yes. we didn't get canceled from that. Amazing. Uh, Matt yes. Friend, uh, we, we want to know more about you and play our personal issues game with you. But uh, as we go to break, we want to play some music. And, and I know you, so I know what your all-time favorite song is. How it's, do we know it's, this? It's what every Gen Zer thinks about. <laughs> Frank, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra, right? Yes. So we go to break with Call Me from Frank Sinatra and your chance to jam out. Call me. Don't be afraid. You, you can, can call, call me. Maybe it's late, but just, just call me. me. Tell me and I'll be around. This is it. Less than stellar genetic code is spreading through burp-borne transmission. Simpsons legend Hank Azaria recording an episode of The Simpsons with Matt Friend watching along. Uh, Matt Friend is back with us. How has Hank Azaria influenced you? Let's start about your relationship with him. Yeah, well, I'm not a Nepo baby. Let's make that clear. <laughs> but my connection was he was my dad's college roommate. Which is crazy. Uh, and at Tufts University and... Ever because of that, I mean, he was really the reason I wanted to get into comedy in the first place. And he's like, was my idol growing up. Uh, I was always emulating him. I saw him in Spam a lot as a kid. I was doing, I fart in your general direction. Uh, <laughs> I was doing all of his voices and I was obsessed with all the characters he created in movies and, and Heat, that scene with Al Pacino, she's got a great ass, <laughs> um, as I talk about with him. So he he's like really the large reason why I wanted to do this. And you recorded an episode of The Simpsons with him. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the biggest dream come true. It's unbelievable. I mean, doing that 
kind of work for a show like that that's been around longer than I've been alive. Which is crazy. Um, and still going strong. So it's, it's amazing. Shout out Matt Selman, too, by the way. Okay. All these people. He'd be in the Simpsons. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let, let's I could be play. making up names, yeah. by the way. Uh, we want to Shout play. out Crystal Michaels. We want to play. Thank That's you. my mom. All right. Let's play our game, Personal Issues, to wrap things up. This is where we put 30 seconds up on the clock and yes. we get to know some of your personal favorites. Rapid fire. First thing that comes to mind. Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. What is your favorite movie of all time? Austin Powers, A Spy Who Shagged Me. Who's your favorite band or musician? Frank Sinatra. What's your favorite book of all time? The Frank Sinatra biography by James Kaplan, two parts. Uh, who's your favorite athlete of all time? Roger Federer. Hey, it's Roger here. <laughs> who's the best impressionist other than you? Of all time? Yeah. Uh, vocally, Rich Little was is alive, phenomenal. I loved Phil Hartman, Bill Hader, uh, there's too many. Jay Farrow, yeah. that's hard. Who's your role model? Uh, my dad, my mom, Bill and Linda, <laughs> Seth MacFarlane, Alex Michelson. Uh, all, those, all those are good answers. Um, and by the way, we're celebrating you this weekend. You're turning 62? 25, 25 62? tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> 63. So get the Viagra, because we're getting up there. 25 tomorrow. This is my last day being 24, so I'm so happy to be here with you. Well, we are, uh, I've got a gift for you, which is oh some cookies my God. from my mom. The issue is cookies, and your mom makes cookies professionally she does. as well, the big fat cookie. Big fat cookie. Um, in, in Thank all, you so much. In, in all honesty, as we get the, the birthday music going, uh, oh my I, I, God. Just, I just want to say, I'm so proud of you, so happy for your success. You uh, are incredibly talented. Thank and, you so and much. And I love you, brother. Well, I love you, and thank you so much for having me. And let me just say one last thing. This is how great Alex is at his job. In between breaks, that sit up, because I was slouching, and he always wants to make the guests look great. So you got Johnny Carson energy, <laughs> and we're standing up straight here. We'll take it. Thank you, Every Alex. Every 25-year-old referencing Johnny Carson. It's really good it. to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all. Until next week, time. Take us, take us out, Johnny Carson. Well, I just wanted to say he's my dear friend, Alex Michelson. Thank you very much. Thank you.